Hi, I'm Christopher Probst, ASC. We're here in Hollywood, California on the set at the Sassafras Saloon for the Orbiter demo short film, which is the Ace Up the Sleeve Western short film. Uh, as you can see, we've uh, dressed out the set quite a bit. Um, we're utilizing the Airy Orbiters in many different configurations with all the different accessories that work with it. Um, China balls, different size uh, soft banks, as well as um, octodomes. So uh, it's quite versatile and we're basically lighting the entire short film with this single unit. So what you'll see at behind the scenes of all this is primarily lit with all the orbiter lights um, and it's looking incredible. For me as an artist, I need to really kind of sink my teeth into something and feel uh, that I'm doing something worthy and artistic and expressing something. Um, you know, I, I span the gamut into sort of genres I work in. I do beauty, makeup commercials, or car commercials, and sheet metal photography. It doesn't matter. What I want to do is create a world and an environment, move people emotionally. And so light is, is, is a huge component of that because you're designing the overall tonality and the mood and the atmosphere. So having atmosphere and haze in here was critically important. I want to feel the shafts of light in the air. I want to have color mixing and color contrast and then desaturate and play with all these tonalities that really starts to evoke an emotional response and you're able to have it feel nostalgic or have it feel vintagey or, or whatnot and that could be cued also with having a light at a certain moment and have it flare the lens and those are all emotional kind of triggers that you can cue that are making the audience feel something even on a subtle level they're not even aware of what are the mechanics behind it all those are, are kind of tools of the, of, the, of the trade so having units to be able to quickly mold those uh, aspects and you know, paint with the light um, as it were is, is, is really important. So uh, we're just bringing our gunslinger up to the bar uh, doing over the shoulder we're carrying his, him in focus and then as we get into uh, the bartender we're playing this uh, DOB Choice Chimera on the um, orbiter light. Have again a little bit of ambient light for color contrast and a little up glow on him to, to mimic like the daylight bouncing in and hitting him in the face. Yeah, so uh, in the background we have this other orbiter with the uh, 30 degree, uh, which is giving me a, a nice sheen angle along the bar as well as edging all the glasses in the background because when we're out of focus on the back of his head, it plays a really nice bokeh on the image. So, uh, Exactly. Go 5,000 with that and hit it above the bar. Yeah. We're setting up in, in the same angle. We're setting up for the back half of this uh, this sequence. So our gunsling is already dispelled with the crooked car dealer. He's coming back to the bar. So while we're fa facing this direction, we're now continuing the coverage on the bartender. I'm going to adjust some of the lighting again to see him, but uh, we'll reset the dolly track. We're going to be doing a push that enters the frame with the with the gunslinger, and then we get the the tail end of this whole sequence. Uh, so I'll start to mix up the lights here too. Let's lose the, um, the two by three right now. And uh, Spence, let's take this, uh, the orbiter and drag it up in, in between the window and the door there on that sort of edge light angle. And then uh, Noah, this dolly is gonna come, probably just only one stick of track on this sort of line. Got it. So he'll come into frame and we'll end up on an over on, on Alan. Gonna turn around and do a two shot. Same action of the gunslinger approaching the bar. So we're gonna start re reshaping all the light again. Um, just cleared out the, uh, the, the two uh, orbiters from the background. I'm gonna do a, a, a profile in a 29 mil. It gave me the idea of like doing these sort of like old school Hollywood slashes 
across people's faces. And that um, keyed me into like, maybe they're playing a poker game and you have these people kind of facing off each other and I can do that sort of homage to old school Hollywood. So that was kind of the impetus of the Western genre. And then once we scouted the Sassafras Saloon, it kind of, um, I saw possibilities of really drawing in all the different tropes of the Western genre. So, you know, taking cues from Unforgiven and Deadwood and all those things that just really have a lot of meat on the bone to kind of cinematographically dig into is just really fun. A lot of atmosphere, shafts of light, playing um, really moody kind of down lighting, um, mixed color temperatures. So it's got a lot of range and we're really kind of putting the um, Arri Alexa LF and the DNA LF lenses as well as the signature uh, primes uh, on this job really t through their paces and so far it's looking great. Now we're preparing to do a big wide shot from the balcony. This is from the burlesque dancer's point of view. When he first comes into the bar, so we're going to see the entire world. So we're going to broom out a lot of these lights and just play a lot of the practicals as is. And uh, it's going to be this sort of big wide establishing of the entire bar. One of the drawbacks with sort of like the early LED options is that they never have enough output. So I was always looking for something that I can, I can use and have a little more heat out of, that's low form factor, still could plug it into a, a wall outlet and not uh, need a lot of power draw. And so now with the Orbiter, for example, I have a very punchy, shapeable, uh, focusable uh, light unit that um, is really just leaps and bounds uh, superior, full RGB color, dimming, remote control. It just broadens a whole horizon of options that I can use. It's literally uh, the, the, the Rubik's Cube of, of lights. I can configure it in all these different um, options and modules and, and con configurations. I can use the light for soft light, I can use it for hard light, for bounced light. Uh, so we're, we're using all those applications uh, pretty quickly too. We have a lot of shots. I was pretty ambitious in the script that I wanted to do. So I was like, no, no, I gotta get all these shots. But at the same time, I need a light that I can use really quickly and be able to adapt and say, I need this. So we saw earlier, I had a big a Max Menace arm from Matthews that was using the Octodome that I can crank up and down quickly. I had the wide shot so I can hide the light out of, out of picture. We're doing glows with both the, the smaller and the larger soft banks, as well as the little um, Muzz uh, China balls. And it's great, it's just, it's the MacGyver of lights. Any sort of solution you need, you can come up with configuration and use it and it still has the full RGB color, uh, dimming and modularity, which is really interesting and a unique factor toward that light. Thanks everyone for watching. I just want to also make a quick shout out to Ari and Sammy's camera, where you can actually pick up these orbiters uh, and, and play with them yourself. They're amazing uh, and highly recommend them.